Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Passage. A lot of interesting things. So let's kind of break thing, everything down that went down in this episode. Obviously, we learned uh, the sad, you know, situation behind, you know, Lila and, you know, Brad's daughter, Eva, like her whole situation. Um... Because, like, I don't know why, because in my head I was thinking she was so much younger than what she actually was. I mean, to be fair, that was kind of, like, the whole point was kind of making the parallels between her and Amy. So, of course, it'd be relatively close in age, but it still didn't correlate in my head. For whatever reason, I thought, I was thinking, like, they lost her because, like, like maybe, like, Lila lost her in the womb or something like that. It didn't correlate in my head to think, like, oh, she was a little girl. But then, once again, it's, like, the whole thing of, like, oh, yeah, like, the whole point is, like, Amy reminded him of... Um, reminded Brad of Eva, but I thought it was just kind of like a, um, I, I don't know what I thought. Like, it, it just kind of, it was like, oh, wow. And also finding out the circumstances in which she died sucks. Just basically, it, you know, everything was good, and it just took the wrong set of circumstances to play out that led to her death. She was murdered, sadly. That just makes it even more gut-wrenching. And the whole entire time, entire time, Brad's blamed himself. He always has. Like, we kind of got introduced to that to the beginning of the series, but now we know, you know, we see the depths of that, like, blame he has for himself. Because, um, he felt like he failed to protect her, him and Lila are going to therapy about it, but for him it's just like, it's it's not enough, it's not going to bring her back, but Lila wants to, you know, kind of dive into work, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's her way to kind of, you know, deal, like find some way to move forward with that pain, kind of fill that hole in her heart, you know, and it's like, the best thing I can do is help people, you know, she wants to help Brad, but Brad won't let her help him, won't let her help them, you know, and so... What he ends up doing is, uh, he, the fact is that he was willing to go to the link that he does. I was actually curious to see whether or not Brad would actually go through it, but he wanted to kill the guy that took his daughter from him. And the fact of the matter is he ultimately did, and like, obviously, like, he went to Clark. So I'm sure that's also, you know, on some level, too, I'm sure Clark kind of feels responsible because it's like, like, there is a domino effect because of just you know and it's a combination of i'm sure like everyone kind of has their own feels their own part to play and where they are right now it's the whole conversation because you know you know and um you know brad's head it's like i should have done something but i didn't but in lila's head it's like no it's all my fault if i had just not taken that extra surgery if i had just left it in someone else's hands if i, I bought the markers but i forgot to get them if i hadn't you know, she would have never went to give you your wallet and would have been in that circumstances. Because even Brad was trying to tell the dude, hey, just take the money and go. And so, there's that. But I'm sure Clark feels responsible because he sent Brad down a path that, like, left him spiraling, essentially. Because he's the one that gave Brad the address. Because I thought, you know, I think for him, he thought, like, hey, I can talk you back, talk Brad back from the ledge and everything of just, like, him spiraling like that. And I was wondering at the time came if he'd do it, and he pulled the trigger on the dude, but it didn't make him feel better. You know, he even ended up telling, you know, Lila the truth about it this episode. And I think that's another layer of guilt that he holds for this whole situation because not only, you know, for him, it, it was not only did I, you know, not protect our daughter, I also killed in her name. So I'm sure that didn't sit right with him too. And he's been carrying that this entire time. And because on top of all that, because he was spiraling, because he, you know, Clark offered him the mission, and it's just like, you know, because Clark was under the impression of like, hey, what we're doing was for the greater good. So any sacrifices that needed to be made, needed to be made. And for him, he realizes and sees the monstrosity that Project No Way has become. Brad knew something was up, but he did, he knew he wouldn't want the answer. So he never asked questions. And now it's like, I, you know, I became a monster and, you know, I taking his job, sent 12 people to become monsters just like me, you know? So I think for him that's going to be an interesting dynamic to continue forward with because I think for him that's going to be something that kind of will never make it. I think he will never turn his back on Amy no matter what happens to her because it's like because he's always going to blame himself like this is happening to you because of me like all my mistakes just me spiraling led to this that you and so many other people got caught up in this you know and the fact is that um he probably will never look at Amy as a monster anyway because he'll always look at himself as one, you know? And I think Lila is having a hard time, you know? I'm curious what is going through her mind hearing this truth and everything, you know? And once again, like I said, it's also because, 
she herself has been carrying around such guilt and weight. And I think, you know, maybe there's some part of her that is relieved to know that that guy is gone. Like, she probably doesn't like the fact that Brad had to be one to do it. But maybe on some level, because she even asked, like, did, did it make him feel better? And he was like, no, it just made me feel more like a monster. But I think maybe she was hoping, maybe it did make him feel better. Maybe she was hoping that it brought Brad some solace. But, you know, maybe it bring her some solace. But I think even in the end, it didn't do anything for her even hearing that. And now seeing like it probably didn't do anything for Brad in all this time, realizing that's something, you know, like I said, it's something else he was struggling with. So, But I think that's also, you know, another reason why Clark is doing this. Once again, it's like he's trying to make it up to Brad because it's like, I got you mixed up in all of this. I'm the one that told you, like, hey, the mission comes first. I'm giving you this mission that's going to give you focus. And you weren't ready for this. And I put you in a situation to do this job that, like, I, once again, I thought it was for the greater good because we're helping a whole bunch of people by doing this, no matter what the sacrifices needed to be made. But now he realizes just how spiraling things have begun. And then, like, you have on top of all this, Gilder is taking control of everything. Even the Secretary of Defense is kind of agreeing with him, which is like, Sykes is literally, like, things are terrible here, but Gilder, I guess, is very good at spinning a web, but to be fair, a whole bunch of money has been sank into this project. I'm sure they don't want to just abandon it, especially because Gilder was like, oh, Amy's the key to figuring everything out, but you're literally on the precipice of everything going wrong, but Gilder is so, so consumed by his own gain, his own ambitions, and his own career that he's not willing to see the potential danger that awaits him. He just sees his, you know, the golden goose in front of him in this particular case it being Amy so the fact is I don't trust that dude Martinez that he's letting in or know on all that stuff because basically he's setting up all these protocols so that like when people are working in the basement or whatever like no one's there for a long enough period of time for people to get brainwashed it's like like oh we get in and out but the fact of the matter is you know it, like um, Sykes tried to tell him it's like no one's impervious to their mind ability so the fact of the matter is it doesn't matter what you do like everyone's going to get swept up eventually and the fact of the matter is Tim is just getting stronger and stronger by the day especially with every, I'm, I do wonder with, you know, um, the other, um, vampire getting killed last episode, I'm blanking on his name now, but, um, with him going, does that make Tim weaker, or the power he gained from that guy existing was enough to get him stronger? It does make you wonder, does it also make Tim stronger than more vampires that were created? So in that time, that dude, uh, Winston, uh, you know, when he created more vampires, did that make Tim stronger or does that not work? Does that does it only work on you? Like when you make more, like in Winston's case, when he made other vampires, it made him stronger or just Tim, you know, a special case because he was, he's basically patient zero. I'm curious like how that works exactly. Because once again, I'm sure like maybe there's a different potency to it. Like when it's just like you're being injected with the virals and then being bit and made into one. Maybe that adds different layers to it. I don't know. It's kind of interesting because, um, well, just, just finishing my thought. Like the fact of the matter is Tim's just more powerful than I think Gilder is willing to give him credit for. And part of me wonders is like he already got to Martinez. Some shape or form, he's already got to him because it's like, oh, he's up there. Gilder's sharing all this information to Martinez, and I'm just waiting for him to kind of get screwed over about, like, oh, how, it, because Martinez is the only one who knows, basically, I guess, the full picture of just, like, the layout and the new securities that they're setting up, so. But, uh, what I was about to bring up was the fact that they, even Shauna has reluctance about this. It's like, wow, things aren't going according to plan, Tim. Like, uh, should we really be having as much faith in you? And even going to the point that Shauna was like, oh, the fact is that, I, why do I care so much about, you know, Clark? It's almost like, She's like, is that kind of like a hangover of humanity? Because I guess she thought given enough time, whatever remained of her humanity would be gone. But now it seems like it's still there. Seems like it's still there in Tim, too, because it's not just about making Elizabeth his 12th. It's about his human attachment to her. He was in love with her, and even in his state. You know, because, and once again, it's, it's crazy because all of this is about getting the woman you love. It's kind of like you were so been out of shape about not being the one who won in that particular case. In the case of, like, something... It's the one thing that mattered most to him in this world was Elizabeth kind of like winning because he lost to Jonas in that regard. And so he would probably, you know, it's like I won in every other regard of my life. And so like I'm now this new powerful being and I'm going to continue to win. So I'm going to get Elizabeth. But it's like, oh, she's going to choose me. But Sean is like, what if she doesn't? It's like, no, she will. And he tries to reach out to her. But 
when the time comes, Elizabeth decides not to. Because for her, her life as a human, those memories she had as, with Jonas are too important to her. Because going down this new life would have meant leaving that behind. But Tim's like, oh, come with me. It's like, And it's just like Jonas said, when the time came, she wouldn't choose you. She loves me. And it's like, that turns to be, out to be the case. I mean, it was already something where it's like Jonas explained, like, oh, yeah, I tried to kill Tim. And like Elizabeth's like, wow, I'm sure that pissed him off. It's like, yeah, I'm sure it did. But he's like, but when is Tim never pissed? And it's like... You know, they're trying to make light of the current situation and stuff like that. But, you know, dying in his arms like that. Like, I mean, we don't know if she outright died then, but obviously it's like, take me off the machine and let me die. I want to die as a human. So, But things aren't going the way Tim thought it would be because Elizabeth wasn't going to be his 12th. Which that in itself kind of seems like it answers my questions because it's like, yeah, I feel like you'd be going back to 11 then because of Winston. But to be fair, I guess that means it's like, no, like once the connection was established, even if Winston's gone, that connection's still there. He already got the strength boost as a permanent stat boost. So even with Winston going, it's still there. So he still needs his 12th being Amy, I think, you know, it, it seems like, you know, obviously that's the direction they're going with that. So. Which we learned a lot of interesting things about Amy this episode too, because uh, Anthony was pushing her because he want because he has such faith in um, Amy of her being so powerful. It's like he believes she's the only one that will be strong enough because she's special, strong enough to fight against Tim and stop what's happening. Because for Anthony, he already made the wrong choice, but he's trying to make up for it because it's like. I don't want to go down the same route as him, which is so interesting because I guess at that moment, you know, when Tim has swayed him and he was tasting blood and just that vampire side, it was so seductive, it completely took him over. But it is interesting, subsequently, since he chose Tim's side, we haven't seen him with the other vampires. We haven't seen him interact with Babcock or Tim, but it seems so. I guess he's constantly mentally on the move. To be fair, not because part of me was worried that maybe this was some long game by you know Tim that he had gotten to Anthony and Anthony had gotten to Amy. But it seems like no, that was all on of his own volition. But we ended up learning that the reason why Amy's mom killed herself and Amy blames herself, believing this is the fact is that it's like her mom, her and her mom got into an argument because like. Amy, you know, Amy's mom didn't register her for school, and Amy was like, I hate you, and, you know, because it's like, oh, move around a lot, chance to make friends and stuff like that, her mom just kind of ruined everything in her eyes, you know, she's she's a preteen and everything, it's like, you're a little kid, you, you say stuff you don't mean, but her mom of her addiction and stuff like that wasn't in the right state of mind, and it just pushed her over the edge, and you know and Anthony's trying to tell her like none of that is your fault because he like he knows that Tim doing and being who he is will use this against her it's like he will use your guilt against you just like he did against literally everyone I mean we really saw that shine through with Anthony of how he guilted Anthony into choosing his side but Amy being able to you know do the vampire thing of kind of cre uh, constructing your own mental place ended up you know constructing her mom and her mom telling her it's like hey you don't I don't blame you, it's not your fault, like, you know, and kind of apologizing on our own side of things and giving her a match and being like, you're not a monster because I know who I raised you to be. I know who you are, who you really are. The fact that you're a son gave her what I assumed were matches so that she could, you know, light her way, essentially. So I thought that was kind of neat while at the same time we had the final, like, the big confrontation between Tim and Amy. And it's kind of interesting because of the whole Amy's guilt thing. I think that's going to be an even tr bigger driving force between Brad and Amy because both of them have, hold such guilt over the losing the people they love most. And the fact is that um, even Lila was like, hey, like, don't ever, you know, let go of Amy, essentially. And he's like, never. Like, when we meet up again, don't ever let go, you know, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see what goes down on that front, like I said, especially during a confrontation. Will Amy be strong enough to fight him off? I believe so. Because even Anthony was like, oh, her transformation will go through soon. Obviously, she's showing, like, the beneficial sides, I think. But even Elizabeth was already showing signs just because, I guess, you know, older age and her condition and everything, she was already showing signs of, like, you know, light sensitivity, but um, Amy hadn't really shown the more negative sides of the transformation yet. She's only received, like, the benefits, but to be fair, it was like that for a little while for Anthony, but because Amy is the youngest, it just seems like it is taking the longest time, but eventually she will reach that point, and I'm curious, you know, will that be 
before Tim is able to get to her? Like, you know, how is this whole thing going to play out? Will because that was something I brought up before. Like, obviously, she'll have all the benefits and stuff like that, but will she get the monstrous form like the others do, or will her situation be different because she is in fact special? You know. Once again, it's like she's able to do stuff that Tim doesn't, isn't able to do. At least we don't know. I mean, Tim, once again, like, they all have had the power to get into each other's mind, but it seems like Tim is the best at it. But Amy also seems like she's got a little, a couple tricks up her sleeve, too, because that scream of hers, like, that's one weapon in our arsenal, but we don't know what else she's capable of. But once again, we don't know what the others are capable of, too. Like I said, Tim seems like the one, the main powered uh dude but like who knows like getting all these different vampires like what that's unlocked for him and also we don't know if the other vampires like like i brought up earlier in the season whether or not they have specific abilities of their own that we're just not aware of it doesn't necessarily seem like it with the whole winston situation but ultimately we just have to wait and see i'm very interested to see what ends up going down because like obviously gilder set that whole situation up for lila and brad to get killed but it's like they were able to kind of sneak back on you know, back onto uh, Project Noah, but like, hey, there's, you know, uh, Jonas, there's um, Sykes, there's Clark, Brad, Lila, so that's already like five people kind of like all against this whole situation. I'm curious if there are going to be any other remaining scientists that are against this. Obviously, a lot of people are getting shifted out, but I'm sure a lot of the same people are staying too, but it's like, I'm curious to see in the long run what's going to end up happening in that regard. Like, will they not be alone, or will, are they alone in this whole situation going up against Gilder and all of this? You know, because it's like, like I said, they got a problem on both fronts. Because they've got Tim concocting whatever plans he's, you know, cooking up. While at the same time, Gilder's, you know, got his machinations and stuff like that, thinking he's in control. Even Amy was like, you're not in control. And he's like, oh, how do you know that? He's, like, She's like, screw you and your stupid mustache. So, like I said, I'm very interested to see what goes down in the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good night.